Hi, this is Phil Necro. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. This is Mark the Banks, and I'm on deck with Tyler Redman. Welcome into On Deck, I'm Tyler Redman. As always, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay up to date with everything going on in Braves country. And we don't have that many games left this season, so you better stay up to date right here at On Deck. Also, you can follow me on social media, Tyler Redman, at Bubblegum Jesus on Twitter and Instagram. So the Braves took on the Red Sox at Fenway Park last night. Max Freed took the mound, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, the most comfortable that you can be as a Braves fan in 2020 is with Max Freed on the mound, and that stayed true last night. It was Freed versus Brewer of the Red Sox, and Freed did not have his best stuff yesterday, if we're being honest. But he powered through not having his best stuff. He took the veterans' approach at limiting damage. In total, he had five innings pitched. He gave up five hits and two earned runs and two walks, but he did get five strikeouts. I thought the biggest takeaway for Freed last night was he was able to pitch effectively without his best stuff. So let's take a look at the offense. The Braves have been firing off early in the game as of late, and that is a big contrast to what they were doing early in the season. Early in the season, it was all late-inning offense. For the past couple of games, it's been 10 runs, and then last night it was one in the first. That run would come off of a Nick Marcakis double. All he does lately is hit doubles. He doubled to bring in the first run of the game, that being Dansby Swanson, and Duvall would homer to tie the game up later, a monster shot over the green monster. But the guy I really want to focus on in terms of offense for the Braves is Austin Riley. And you know I'm an Austin Riley guy. I, I, I thought for a long time that he has the potential to be the next big thing for the Braves, and he's showing it right now. For the past seven games, he's looked tremendous. For the past 15 games, he's looked tremendous. I think he's really starting to heat up. He got a triple last night with bases loaded, and to be honest with you, it was just a few feet shy of a grand slam. That scored three runs in the fifth inning to put the game well in the favor of Atlanta. Just a really good night for Riley. He was two for five, but he's really looking good lately just in general. The swing adjustments he made in the offseason are beginning to take hold and is really helping him be productive in the lineup. Of course, he moved up to the five spot last night. I really like that for him. That's where I want him to be. Uh, when he's hot, and he's certainly been hot lately. The Braves would win this one 6-3 in Boston, and Max Freed took the win. He is now 6-0, and and he is still leading the Cy Young conversation of the National League. Just a great year he's having. Melanson got the save, and the Braves are 20-14. and They are in first place above the Philadelphia Phillies, and that's not the biggest worry for Braves fans right now. The National League East is kind of a, an afterthought. The, the main problem, if you're a Braves fan, is what the roster is going to look like in the postseason. And yesterday, those concerns reached a season high. Uh, as you know, yesterday was the trade deadline. And I hear you, Braves country. You wanted something to happen yesterday. You wanted some starting pitching to come the Braves' way, and it did not happen. I understand your frustration. A lot of fans took to social media yesterday voicing their anger. I get it. I understand it. And it seemed like the Braves were in every conversation, so it kind of felt like you were being led on a little bit. But... Clevenger happened. He goes to the Padres. Lance Lynn, right up until the end, doesn't get moved from Texas. And the Braves were in all those conversations, so it seemed. And they were in all those conversations, but nothing ever happened. So let's talk about some of the reasons why. Look at the Clevenger package, right? Clevenger goes to the Padres, and the Padres give up six players, including some notable prospects. Now think about this. Do you really want to give up six prospects, six highly touted prospects from the Braves organization? Players like Ian Anderson, players like Christian Pache, Drew Waters, Tucker Davidson, Patrick Weigel. Do you really want to give some of those guys up? William Contreras, I can name them all day long. Do you really want to do that for this one season? Because that's what the Padres did last night. They're all in. They're going for it this year. And all respect to them for doing it. They're the hottest team right now. But I don't know that the Braves are necessarily at that spot. But... I wonder, if you're a Braves fan that was mad about the deadline last night, just absolutely furious with Braves management, do you really have that much faith in this season? Because i got to tell you, I have a lot more faith in the next five to ten years for Atlanta than I do this season alone. And as much as I understand your frustrations, so does Alex Anthopoulos, the guy that you're mad at for not doing anything yesterday. He held a press conference yesterday, and this is basically what he had to say. We would have loved to have added more. We had a lot of discussions, but we ultimately didn't think there were deals that made sense for us. There were a lot of players moved, 
but we had to decide how good are these players, how much are they an upgrade over what we currently have. He went on to say that the hangup was not financial, it was talent. That is a really good thing to hear. So the, the problem is weighing internal versus external, what we have on the team versus what we don't. And then he had this to say, and I thought this was really interesting. He said this about fan frustration. I absolutely understand. I'm a sports fan. I can tell you that we've had opportunities to move Austin Riley, Ozzie Albies, Ronald Acuna, Ian Anderson, Dansby Swanson, and so on. But as we sit here today, we're glad we held on to those players. And I got to tell you, I'm glad they held on to those players. Dansby Swanson's having a heck of a year. Ronald Acuna is an elite player. Ian Anderson, from all accounts, is a stud. Austin Riley, of course, is heating up. Ozzy Albies, we got him on a sweetheart deal. I have no problem with keeping any of those players. And I have a feeling as time goes on, we're going to be glad that we kept the players that could have been dealt yesterday. Double A went on to say that you have to ultimately do what you believe is right, and we'll find out in the end if you made the right decision. That's all I can really say. I think this is the right process the Braves need to take, regardless of whether it works out, which I think it will, but regardless of whether it works out, this is the right process. So let's think about it. If you're trying to get Clevenger, right, the biggest name in the market yesterday, if you're trying to go get Clevenger or even Lance Lynn, and Cleveland or Texas say, okay, Give me some combination of Pache and Anderson, Austin Riley, and Drew Waters. That's pretty much a no-go for me. That's a deal-breaker. I'm not doing it. Um, losing Ian Anderson himself is a deal-breaker because if you want to go get a starting – if you need starting pitching, what is giving up your biggest starting pitching prospect going to do for you? I don't think much of anything. Not to mention there's a lot more factors than that internally, one being that – Mike fulton is getting back to major league level. And I know I'm going to get some heat for this because a lot of you guys think that because I've met fulton and interviewed fulton that I have some preconceived notions. These are the facts. He's hitting 94 miles an hour consistently as of late. He's looking really good, and my sources are telling me that he's looking to return pretty soon. That's just what I have to say about it. Well, now, we'll see if he makes the 40-man roster going into the latter part of the season, but that's the facts that I'm hearing right now. I genuinely think Fulton Evich can come back and be an influential player, whether it be this year or next. And I think that's what the Braves are gearing up for. If history tells us anything, that can't happen. Look at last year. But also, Tucker Davidson and Bryce Wilson have made some great strides uh, lately. And Alex Antopoulos actually mentioned this. And I wouldn't be surprised if either of those two guys got a start over the next couple of weeks, namely Tucker Davidson, which is what I'm really excited for. Cole Hamels is another factor. Cole Hamels obviously has disappointed so far this year just in terms of injury not in terms of performance and his inevitable return has got to be in the back of the mind if you're a Braves fan or if you're in Braves management it's got to be in the back of your mind it's also not a seller's market right now the Braves need a good deal for the right price and it just wasn't there yesterday especially in starting pitching so you can be mad you can take your frustrations to Twitter but remember last year we needed a bullpen Right, and that happened. We pretty much got a bullpen for practically nothing. If you remember, Shane Green, Mark Melanson, and Chris Martin. The only notable prospect that we gave up was Colby Allard. And Allard, by the way, a lot of people were upset when we gave him up, including myself. He's currently 0 for 3 with a 6.5 ERA. Now, who knows if he stays within the Braves organization, what happens? Who, who really knows what he's going to be in two to three years, right? But Obviously, we wish him the best. We hope it gets turned around. But that's the kind of deal we need. We got three studs in the bullpen for one notable prospect. That's not the kind of deal that was going to happen yesterday. But that's the type of deal we need. And it just wasn't there. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust the track record of AA. He's always made good deals for the Braves. He's never made any deal that made me scratch my head and say, what are you doing, like other teams have done over the past few years. Unfortunately, we couldn't make anything happen at the deadline. But with this crazy season, I don't want to commit everything into this season. I want to commit everything to the next five or ten years. And I think that's what Braves management is doing. And I hope that, you know, Braves fans will get along and uh, get on the bandwagon with that. But I think long term, really, this is the best decision for the Braves considering the circumstances of this season. So that's all I got for today. I appreciate you watching. As always, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell for notifications so you can stay updated with everything going on in Braves country. And I'll see you next time on deck.